Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason, bringing you today's episode. This is Freya, the fuzzy one. She doesn't show off the camera that, that time this year. And uh, we're, again, bringing you today's video. We're going to be talking about a book that we've talked about in the, or a series we've talked about in the past, and an author we've talked about in the past. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, guys. We really appreciate that support. We love doing this, we're gonna do it anyway. We love to talk about books, but that support would mean a lot to us. And thank you to our supporters on Patreon. We um, we hope right now you guys are enjoying the RSS feeds, kind of the podcast type feed where we just stitch together the audio of our review, something for you guys to listen to. Eventually, we will do a podcast that will have a separate separate uh, separate thing. We'll let you guys know. But right now, working two jobs, we just can't do it. So, I want to talk about Andrew Moriarty and his Adventures of a Jump Space Account. I already did book one. This time, we're going to talk about book two, guys. I love this series. I absolutely love this series. I'm getting ready to finish the series. Then I'm going to check out what else Andrew Moriarty has written. It is an absolute blast. By the way, real fast, hopefully. Please email us, reviewsintent at gmail.com or on the comments. Send us some book suggestions. We're going to pick one and uh, we'll announce it to everybody for December and we'll get a little book club going with all of you guys that are watching as well. We'll all read the same book. I'll do a quarter of the book every week. Through, uh, through December, and I'll do a video on it. We could talk it, we could chat about it through the comments if I'm able to figure out the timing. Again, two jobs. Um, maybe I'll make it a live stream so we can chat on the comments. Um, but if not, you know, we can, or chat rather in real time, but if not, uh, we can chat through the comments and all that. You know, get everyone talking about it. Maybe, you know, if I can figure out how, you know, I'll, I'll start a, um, a, uh, a Discord thing. Maybe we can talk about it on there. Uh, just for fun, you know, a little book club. It's a lot of fun. I do one I do one at work. We have a lot of fun with it talking about the book as we finish it up. So, Andrew Moriarty, An Adventures of a Jump Space Accountant 2. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole the world, blah, yada, yada. Well, I'll talk about the plot of the book because I'm going to talk about the book because I've already talked about book one. So, now we're just continuing on. I'm going to talk about book two. Now, we our intrepid hero, Jake, is continuing to work for Mr. Dashi as a, theoretically, as a spy. Now, as we discussed in the first book, Jake very much seems to be written as a very high-functioning autistic type of character, which actually pops up in a lot of fiction. The more interesting, not more interesting, but a lot of characters do end up uh, with a lot of autistic traits, probably because it sort of fits within the fantastical world of books. You kind of need people to be above average or rather outside, not above average, possibly below average, or just outside the norms in some way, shape, or form in order to make them more interesting. And uh, plus, I mean, I'm autistic, guys. I, my, my stepson, I know a bunch of people. There are about one in 50 guys are, are somewhere on the scale, and about one in 250 women, as far as we know, are somewhere on the scale. So we all know a lot of people that, uh, that fit these profiles. So none of this is really out of the norm. Only Jake is, is definitely very solidly entrenched within the spectrum because a lot of, he's got some incredible strengths and some weaknesses that are... Very telling. And his weaknesses are all social. Weaknesses are all social. All people, society, social interactions, um, except for the stuff he grew up with, which again makes sense. Things once once you learn things, they tend to imprint very, very, very deeply in your head. So this starts out with Jake continuing to work for Mr. Dashi, being sent on a mission and failing it utterly. However, as we learn, of course, that was Mr. Dashi's plan from the get-go. Although he never tells Jake that. So Jake fails this mission in quite a spectacular way, beyond spectacular way, an epic way. Ends up in jail, and of course Mr. Dashi doesn't help him out, except uh, kind of steering things so that uh, Jake is either looking at one heck of a long prison sentence for, for something very, very minor, uh, that actually he didn't do, it wasn't even his fault, or go to the military. I mean, this military is the militia, because again, we are in this world where the Empire has left, they're in the small solar system, they have no ability to get outside the solar system, no ability to recreate the technology, only maintain it, and it is slowly failing. And you've got your, your, your life on the moon, then you've got your orbital stations and corporations, and then you've got your outer belt, which are the very rustic, which is where Jake is from. So he's got a lot of, of rustic skills, plus his, his accounting skills and his pedantic uh, personality towards paperwork and rules, regu regulations, laws, and invoices of all things. So he is sent to join the military. 
But this was all actually part of Mr. Dashi's plan because he sends a couple others to join the military as well, along with Jake, basically makes it three of them. Two of them are, in a way, kind of unofficial bodyguards for Jake, although they come across as sort of airheads, but they are actually pretty tough in their own ways. Like, one of them can really shoot. Um, now, Jake, it turns out, is beyond pathetic with a weapon. In fact, at one point, from point-blank range, about three feet away, he empties a gun on a stationary target, never manages to hit his target a single time, but does manage to shoot his boss, which is pretty amusing and, of course, doesn't go very very well for him there either. And uh, um, his social skills or lack thereof end up leading him to getting pickpocketed. He loses a weapon. It, he, it's, he's just a disaster. Jake is just an absolute disaster, except that he still manages to see things nobody else sees and patterns nobody else sees, which also fits within an autistic type of person and is again very very pedantic about certain things and what Mr. Dashi is really looking for in this particular instance are metals. He's looking for metals, especially rare earth metals. Those are very very valuable because those are used in continuing to maintain this technology that is failing that they need to have maintained. And Mr. Dashi sees, he's trying to get ahead of what he sees as an upcoming eventual possible conflict and is trying to secure as many of these metals as possible. So he sends Jake out as part of this militia to uh, on, on this mission to retrieve these metals. Now, Jake sees his boss failing at it multiple times and eventually starts making some suggestions because, again, this is what he does. He grew up in the belt. He grew up in mining. He grew up in making deals and negotiating, and he knows the stuff, and he knows the ins. He knows the outs. By the way, Nadine shows back up because, of course, she does. She is a thorn in his side. <coughs> and we start to learn a little bit more about Nadine and being an agent of another power. Mr. Dashi is obviously a power within his own, the TGI, the Transgalactic Insurance, I believe it is. Whereas Nadine is, is turning out to be an agent for another very powerful person along the lines of Mr. Dashi. So she's out pretty much doing the same thing as Jake, which of course leads into some conflicts here and there, some issues here and there. She doesn't shoot him this time, so I'll, I'll give him... Uh, I'll give her that much credit, although she still almost leads to him getting killed. But, again, she didn't shoot him, so, you know, that's a plus. And, naturally, Jake manages to to get his way out of this via great planning and pedant pedantic rule-following, knowledge of contracts, invoices, bills of lading, and rules and regulations. This is a different series, this is a different type of story, in that while there is action in it, and, and so it's, there's a lot of making plans and thinking their way through rather than fighting their way through, although Nadine is definitely a fight her way through kind of person. I cannot, I cannot recommend this series enough. This series is absolutely hilarious. Andrew Moriarty's writing style is beyond funny. Absolutely hilarious. Character interactions and, and, and conversations are just an absolute riot. From the most idiotic of characters to the most intelligent of characters, it's just the funniest, funniest, funniest interactions and funniest conversations. It is an absolute blast. I can't tell you how many times I had to stop and read a passage out loud to my wife because I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. She usually looked at me like I was an idiot, but that's the default look, so I'm used to it. Guys, after you guys hit the like and subscribe buttons, go check out Andrew Moriarty and Adventures of a Jump Space Account. If you read the first one, gotta go check out book number two. Thank you for watching, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye now.